Joining us here at Post 9 in a CNBC exclusive is Stryker CEO Kevin Lobo. Kevin, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So you saw so much growth across all of your geographies. Tell us what some of the key factors were that were driving that growth and how much of this really comes down to a, a buildup of, of surgeries that people didn't get during the pandemic. Yeah, thank you, Julia. We had a fantastic quarter. We're firing on all cylinders, growth in the U.S., growth in international, growth in procedures that you talked about, but also growth in capital equipment in hospitals because we have such a diverse set of businesses. I would say that the procedures and return to procedures following the pandemic is probably about 150 to 200 basis points of growth. Uh, we grew, as you know, double-digit growth. Before the pandemic, we were growing around 8 percent, 7, 8, so high growth company. But now we've guided for the full year at the midpoint to 10 percent organic growth. How long does that backlog of procedures that would have happened during the pandemic last for? I think it's certainly all of this year and probably most of next year, potentially longer, as we're seeing aging demographics and really successful procedures. The street seems really interested in, in margins and how that gets back to how we normalize that trend as well coming out of the pandemic, right? Absolutely. So last year we were really hit hard by the supply chain crisis, electronics in particular. The costs really spiked much more than normal inflation. We had a big step forward this quarter with our margin expansion, and we're laser focused on returning back to that 26.3% that we had in 2019. Of the markets we're looking at, we, we uh, hips and knees, right? I mean, everybody sort of probably knows someone at this point who's either considered or has gone through uh, that procedure. Is, is the product innovation sweetest in those categories or elsewhere? We have innovation across all of our portfolio. We're actually in, in the midst right now of what I call a super cycle of innovation across our capital equipment business, new power tools, new cameras, new defibrillators. But with hips and knees, the biggest innovations, frankly, aren't on the implants. It's on robotics, enabling technology, 3D printed products that enable you to do a knee procedure without bone cement. That's really been the catalyst for Stryker's growth, as we're that clear leader in robotic assisted surgery, as well as cementless. If robotics have been the catalyst for this past leg of growth, what's going to be the next catalyst for growth? Does it continue to be robotics or is it something like AI? Well, the P penetration of robotics, for sure, is in, we're in the early innings, especially outside the United States. So that'll continue to be a tailwind. AI will come on top of that, whether it's AI with virtual reality or mixed reality goggles to help see things directly, AI to assist the surgeon as they're doing their procedure, giving them cues. Uh, certainly, we're investing a lot in AI. We have AI today for shoulder replacement that actually does the plan for the surgeon based on scanning of the a CT scan of the patient and suggests the procedure and actually has the surgical plan. The surgeon can change it if they like, but it's already driving tremendous growth in our shoulder business. Uh, in terms of the competition, I mean, how, how, how focused are you on innovation elsewhere and, and share? So share gain has been part of our story. So the market in med tech typically grows around 5%. We were growing around 8 We're up to 10 So the market has moved up, but we're about 300 basis points faster. We're always focused on growing faster than our competition largely driven by innovation, innovating faster than our competition and innovating differently. Like robotics was a big bet. I did the Mako acquisition about 10 years ago. Wasn't popular. I came on the show and people didn't like it, but it's really taken off. In the end, are, is, is, your, is your view that these are elective procedures that can be postponed if the consumer gets pressured to a large degree in the year or two ahead? Not Knee replacement you can delay somewhat, but osteoarthritis is degenerative. It doesn't heal itself. Hip replacement hurts. So even if you're sleeping at night, it's painful. So you can only delay it for so long before you have to get them done. Right.